All right, so with the kettlebell swing, a couple things that I see that is putting you off to not the best start is how you set up the kettlebell to start. So if the kettlebell is too close to your feet, you're not gonna be able to get that hinge going with it as close to my feet as it is. You're gonna want it about a foot away. So once the kettlebell is about a foot away, let's go from the side here so you can see. All right, and then your feet are a little bit wider than hip width. You don't wanna be all the way out here. You don't wanna be too, too narrow where it's gonna be hard for you to get that kettlebell in between your legs. All right, so I like hip width maybe slightly um, wider than hip width. And then I'm ground, you see me wiggling around here. I am like gluing my feet to the ground, okay? I make sure that my base, meaning like from my ankles down, I am glued to the floor. And if I was going to screw my feet in, I am rotating kind of my feet out and locking them in. I'm not rotating them out, I'm not moving my feet, but I'm envisioning that I have screws at the bottom of my shoes and I'm locking those feet into the floor. They're like magnets, they're on the floor, they're not coming off, all right? So when I go into that swing, my heels should not come up, my toes should not come up, I should not be rocking at all. So again, if possible, flatter shoes are best for movements where you wanna ground your feet because a running shoe naturally is gonna have the toe come up and it will uh, cause a little bit of rocking um, if you're not understanding the concept of like grounding those feet. So first step, kettlebell is about a foot from my feet. And if you notice, it kind of forms like a triangle here. So toes, that's the bottom of the triangle. Kettlebell is the top. From here, I'm gonna hinge. I'm gonna grab a hold of the top of that kettlebell. My spine is flat, so I'm not rounding at the back here. Okay, I'm driving my hips back. I'm loading up my hamstrings and my glutes. I'm gonna grab a hold of that kettlebell and I'm gonna tilt it like I'm hiking a football. From here, I'm gonna hike that kettlebell to the back of my glutes and then I'm gonna pop my hips forward, okay? So I'm rocking those hips back and then powerfully uh, hinging forward, kettlebell follows. So technically, I could hold this kettlebell with two fingers and it should just glide. Popping my hips, kettlebell glides, we go about shoulder height here and then when you set it down, you put it back in the same spot. So Yeah, so key things, if you just stand sideways for me, let's yep. talk about a few things here. So all of your power with the kettlebell swing is coming from lower body. It's coming from right in between here, not from the low back. This isn't a, a low back swing. It's you're really driving from the yes. hips where the leg bones meet into the pelvis. Everything from the top of the hips up through the shoulders should maintain as stiff as a board the entire time. And then the arms are almost like they're just appendages hanging from here. Like straps. The, that's it. And you just have like a hinge, like a, like a, a pulse, a post going through here. And the arms are just rotating on that, but it's all being driven by that hip drive. The, the biggest mistake that I see people make, which uh, I don't know where people learn this from, Maybe it's Instagram, there's a lot of yeah. bad stuff. We, we wanna have the good stuff on Instagram. There's a lot yeah. of bad stuff on Instagram. But they'll, they think it's a full body movement. So they're, they're, they're here, then they grab it and it's... Yeah, they squat and do a front raise. And it's this. And if the weight is light enough to do a front raise, you're not using heavy enough weight for that hip drive. But I love, Tara, I love what you described. I was gonna show it with a, with a towel. Yep. But yeah, just hooking it with your fingers, you can't, like I can't lift it up like that, but I can swing it up. Yeah. So it's a great, that's a great cue. Another one that I've seen, just to get at least the lower part correct, is using a towel and just kind of, just starting real slow and swinging and just practice, just real light, just right here, focusing on that hip drive. And then that's how, because the, the, that initiating moment a lot of the times is the hardest part because it's not a huge range of motion movement. Yep. It's short, powerful, explosive, driving forward with your hips. It's not a pulling with your back. Another cue that we've used before too here is to understand how you need to hinge is we'll place a med ball down, okay? So if someone is swinging too low, Right, if they're swinging too low, as we'll see another, another uh, version of this, is the kettlebell is too far away from their groin. All right, so their kettlebell's here, and then they're pulling it up. So if you put this med ball in between your feet, 
Okay, we're not going to start on the ground here. We're just going to hang that kettlebell here. You're going to initiate with that hinge and we're going to pop our hips forward, keeping that kettlebell tight to your groin. If it's not tight to your groin, it's going to hit that ball and it's going to get kicked away. So if someone is having a hard time understanding how close the kettlebell actually stays to your groin, that is another option that we have used um, to help understand the space between the kettlebell and your feet on the floor and where it needs to be um, to get that power from those hips. So. Yeah, and don't be afraid with the kettlebell swings too, don't be afraid to go light on them because this is gonna be, if you go too heavy on these and your form is compromised, it's probably the number one or one of the highest risk exercises for hurting yourself if it's not done right. If it's done safely in correct form, then it's an, one of the most amazing exercises you can do for building power and explosion. So don't hesitate to go lighter on this one than you think you need to really get that movement down and that explosion down. And then it's very easy to increase in weight from there. One thing I would love for you to show too is, for example, if we do go too heavy, can we explain how the back starts to arch? Yeah. And then they're thrusting their hips forward a little bit too much because they want to get that shoulder height. And then um, it's just they're, they're going past the end point of where we want to be on the swing. Yeah, that's so a great point. So arch in that lower back. Yeah, when it comes to the kettlebell swing, there's a very fine moment in there where you're actually doing work. The rest of it is rest. <laughs> so a lot of these kettlebell certifications, they're doing literally five minutes straight of kettlebell swings with zero rest. Well, they, they say zero rest, but actually from here all the way up to here and then all the way back down to here again, mm -hmm. that, that's the rest. And then it's catching it at the bottom and then exploding back up. So it's a very fine moment where all that stress is being driven into the hips. Posterior core, glutes, not just the hips. Yeah, you gotta be ready for all yes. of it. And even in the shoulders needing to stabilize. So what can happen a lot with kettlebell swings, we see one of two things, and one is on the flexion, the other one is on the extension. But we see a lot of on the downward swing, you're either going too heavy or not engaging the whole core enough, and you get this flexion fault, mm -hmm. where that lumbar spine goes into flexion, and that creates a huge amount of shear on the discs in the low back. Then the other mistake is it's kind of a drive forward and up. It's like, it's like that motion that you're doing, not that motion. And so what a lot of people will do is they drive forward mm -hmm. and then they end up back like this and then they're flexed forward and then they drive forward and extend back where it's really this hip drive you're pushing forward, but up at the same time. And when you squeeze your glutes at the top, it protects you from that. Cause you can't, it's hard to do this and squeeze your butt at the same right. time. And that's where that tension on that lower back comes in. SI joints, low back. Uh, you, that's where if you're waking up the next day after doing kettlebell swings and you feel like this deep ache across your low back, you, you want to make overdid adjustments. It. Yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> you overdid, overdid it, it or your form technique is way off and you need to see one of us and let, let us help you with that. <laughs> so I guess the main thing here is, in all of the movements that we spoke about today, a big part of it is core control and core engagement and understanding that if it's an upper body movement, it may involve the whole body working together to yeah. make sure, for example, a dumbbell bent over row is done properly. Yeah. So I think that's the key component of today's talk is just core engagement and how the body all works together to do, to work one muscle group. Yeah. So. Nice work. Awesome job. <laughs>